Uh, hi, Carl. This is Charles. I'm the product developer, as you well know, of the Oxy Green Blaster and Bedbug Destruct system. I'd like to introduce you to everybody. This is Carl Hollins from Expert Pest Control in Massachusetts. And Carl and Expert Pest uh, became one of our first group of beta testers of the Oxy Green Blaster and Bedbug Destruct system a little over a year and a half ago. And Carl has agreed to come on and just talk a little bit about uh, what their experience was using the, the Oxy Green Blaster uh, to kill uh, bed bugs. So can you tell me a little bit about expert pest control, Carl, and how your what your business model looks like and what type of works you got you guys do? Expert pest is starting a twenty third a year in in the pest in the pest control business. Uh, traditionally it's been a general pest control company, structural copper ants, termites and the like. Some institutional work, residential work, some commercial work. Got it. And um, what 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 types of fo treatments you focused on was just general pest control in the past, and then you decided a couple of years ago to to look at the bed bug problem. Is that right? That's correct. Jim was looking for a way to get into the bed bug arena, something that would handle bed bugs beyond just traditional insecticides, but without going to the extent of buying one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of heat equipment. Got it. And so you, you guys answered basically a little ad in the back of Pest Control Technology Magazine. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, Jim answered that ad, and he and I made contact with you and got our questions answered by Ozone. Got it. And uh, you've owned our system for a year and a half. I know it wasn't, you didn't get started with it right away. About uh, how many bed bug jobs have you guys done with it? We have about 30 jobs with the system under our belt total. Uh, so, you know, some of those are combination jobs of traditional insecticides and ozone, and quite a number of those are ozone only. Got it. And before you guys bought the system, this is a question I just got to ask you. Were you skeptical that you could accomplish a bed bug removal with just oxygen and essential oils? Basically, yes. Uh, Jim was fairly skeptical. We had to check it out. You know, there's not a lot of literature out there on using ozone to kill an insects. Yep. And so you did a little bit of research, and uh, do you know what it was that pushed you guys over the edge and made you take the plunge to give it a try? Well, I spent a few years in a science lab, you know, and so the basic science made sense to me. Uh, it made sense that the immune system of the of the bed bug had to be compromised, even though that's not one of your claims per EPA. Yeah. Um, however, it just makes it makes sense to me that it had to work. Yeah, and if you're gonna, that, it's good. If you're gonna knock out the bugs, you may as well kill the viruses and bacteria while you're at it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, you, well, I think when I talked to you before, you mentioned that. You really haven't had any struggle in trying to sell this in the marketplace. It's been sort of easy for you, right? Fairly much, you know. The way I, I try to explain it to customers, I mentioned that we have a, a non-regulated gas that we use. People seem to understand the concept of fumigation. When you, so when you explain to them that you're using a non-regulated gas mm. that's, sort, that's similar to a fumigant, they understand it. Yeah. Not really a fumigant, but you're using the air and making it unstable, and it certainly does a, a number of viruses and the bacteria, and the other things that don't leave the evacuation area do not fare well. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. So, um, you, what, can you tell me about your first uh, project that you did with the system and what, what the results were like? Sure, our first project was about an 800 square foot job. It was a small cape, uh, two bedrooms, bath, and a hallway, which we partitioned off with plastic, pressurized the entire upstairs. Did all of our prep work with the cracks and crevices and dust. Ran the machines for about three, three to four hours. Finished those up, and then we ran our essential oils, fogged it up. Yeah, and you did discover that on larger structures, you've got to run the machines a little bit longer? 
Yes, absolutely. We found that we have to run the machines a little bit longer. Yeah. In order to get the and get, and get enough gas in there. And we discovered that uh, you know big fat females seem to fare a little bit longer if they've recently fed full of blood. I'm not quite sure what the mechanism is, but uh, it seems that uh, nothing fares well beyond six hours if you've got the right amount of gas for the right amount of square footage, and that's what a lot of our guys have settled on. But uh, did it? Um, you haven't really focused yet on any of the other sanitizing applications of the gas. Have you guys thought about doing that or, or thought about make marketing maybe a contract model where you go in and once a month do a preventative gas treatment? We have some folks that are really, really doing wonders using the equipment on a repeat basis for schools. And they've done some testing and pre and post testing before they apply the gas. and discovered that uh, just one application of the gas into the central HVAC system is enough to really sanitize the surfaces. They've gotten nearly 99% knockdown of all their viruses and bacteria in their tests. Is that a, something you guys have thought about getting into? Or, or It's one of the hardest things I have to do when I'm talking to my pest control guys is, is let them realize that there's a... Don't forget the forest for the trees. You know, There's a lot of other markets that are waiting to be exploited with this equipment and and a down economy getting more money from your existing customer base by offering other services really can be un, an untold fount of wealth for the contractor but after we get a, a process done here we're certainly going to move into other markets awesome and um have you guys uh done anything when you're looking in your when you're doing your inspections for general pest uh, do you ever send your guys through the crawl spaces in the attics that's something that the guys do on routine they're always up in attics well that's another opportunity for you where if you teach your guys what they're looking for and get them certified as mold inspectors there can be some really easy money laying there and you can base it around that same core equipment that you use for the bed bugs too. And a lot of times you get bed bug like money for treating those uh, square footages. And it's fairly easy to get your guys certified and to learn the protocol. And then it, you can apply that same bed bug equipment to uh, padding your pockets with uh, simple mold jobs. And you know the tools that you need to do it, you, you already have. You know, it's our, our process relies a lot on borates, and virtually every pest control operator is familiar with borates and, and borate loading in one form or another. Wonderful. Is that, is that something you guys might uh, consider at any point in time? Well, I'll certainly have to talk to Jim about it and see if he's interested in that particular arena, but... Well, you're just another, I'm just trying to point out other ways that you, your folks can make money using that same equipment. So I, I think I'd asked you before, you guys don't really rely on a flat rate pricing model. You don't really rely on a square footage pricing model. How do you look at a job and how, do you, how have you priced your bed bug job so far? Yeah, exactly. I try not to use a square foot price. Uh, in part so I can avoid phone calls. I like to get out to the job to inspect the job. It, a handful of the jobs come up as early infestations. Others are far advanced jobs. So I try to base it on the complexity of the job. And then, of course, for the economic piece, it's, you know, if the customer is able and willing to pay more, I price according to that. But, and then I try and tear it down from there. Try to make sure that you uh, can make the make the price fit the service and give everyone a, a fair value. Exactly. And are you trying? Are you are you guys pretty much on pace with the say heat guys in your marketplace, or do you try and underbid those guys a little bit? Or you know, I've got some guys that actually target the heat guys, and they they price their their work. Uh, just underneath them so that they can get the money. And I've got other guys that say, hey, I'm providing a better service. We're killing the viruses. We're killing the bacteria. We're killing the mold spores. And I charge a premium for that. And so I found it's based on the personality of the individual 
a system owner, but I just wondered what your thoughts were. Since I, I do the majority of the selling, and what I find really is that the market is truly segmented. If you find a landlord and that landlord happens to value his property, his or her property, they'll do the job. Uh, other landlords are have a lot less cash flow available. And they don't want to cut into their profits. So you have to just price the job differently. And, you know, naturally you have to price it for profit. And some jobs you let go and others you just bid on and win. I got it. So you rely on your natural skill to assess the situation and bid accordingly. That's what I do. So um, you've been using the system. You've done over 30 jobs with it. You say there was a learning curve, but, but really your success, you would say, overall has been positive. The success is fantastic. No, no real complaints. You, know, you have your callbacks. I had a, I've had maybe three or four callbacks I've had to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and it yeah. just so happens that on those particular callbacks, even the heat, even the heat guys had problems. This, there was one building in particular which was really troublesome. Were they reinfe getting reinfested by the the uh, kids or something? It's it's a question mark right now. We're still trying to figure that out. But the debt job is since we've been in there and the troubleshot the job, it's it's all set. Oh. So three three callbacks out of thirty jobs, and you've still uh, been able to satisfy the callback jobs. Absolutely. Well, that's really a phenomenal rate. I mean, there there are very few other systems that can boast that kind of uh, success dealing with bed bugs. And quite, you know, and to be honest, I mean, as far as the callback rate is concerned, I think I mentioned to to you earlier before we got on the call that we can really control the callback rate by educating our customers, letting them know what to expect, and really following up on following up on the service. So everybody's nervous. Well, no communication is a huge thing. It's, it's one of the things I've had to work the hardest with on my own technicians in my mold remediation business, is you can avoid so many imaginary... I can solve any real problem, like you can solve any real bug issue. It's the imaginary problems that will get you. And communication stops all that. And it's a real, real big factor. And it's something that I think a lot of the uh, smaller pest control guys never even think about. They get out there and they do their job. And, and you know, dealing with the customer post-job uh, isn't really on their agenda. And I think that you raise a really valid point that all pest control, oper pest control operators should, should take and heed wisely. It's really important to maintain your, your communication before, let them know exactly what you expect from them on the preparation, be clear about your pre-prep list, what you guys will do, what they need to do, and what it's got to look like if you want to hope for a permanent success. And uh, communication is a really, really important factor. So do you, do you have any uh, tips or tricks for anybody that are looking at getting into this marketplace, anything you would do uh, differently on your second go around if you could do it again with knowledge I would tell everybody to to slow down no matter how detail oriented you think you are uh, slow it down two paces double check everything in the room as if you were going to do a traditional insecticide job break down all your furniture break down everything make sure everything's out in the open and you should be fine yeah. And so for the people that are out there that are watching this, that have been looking at getting into the big, they want to get some of those big bed bug jobs, but they've been maybe missing out because the big boys in the business have the 80000 or $100,000 heat system. The best news that I've got for them is that we have former heat system users that have switched over to our approach. What would you tell them and, uh, and would you recommend that they do the same thing that you did and buy a system? I would recommend that they buy a system. I would recommend that they get into trying out different level of complexity jobs. You know, buy a system and set a company goal to try out low infestation jobs and figure out what the learning curve is for those low infestation jobs. Work out your protocol. Have your crews stick to that protocol and communicate with one another. Yeah. And so overall, you, you'd recommend this? I would recommend it. Awesome. Well, um, 
I didn't know if you had any other tips or tricks for keeping your customers happy, but uh, the communication to me is is a really big key. Had you have you guys ever done the cars? A, a trip, a tip that we've learned from some of our guys is that they really need to stick. They throw one of the ozone generators in the cars, especially if it's a family and the the whole family goes for a ride. We found actual dead uh, bugs and casings in and on the seats of the cars, and so you think you might do your job as beautifully as you possibly can, and they're reinfesting their own house from their car. Is that something you guys have ever noticed? Well, we haven't. We're, we're, fairly, we're very, very careful before we get back into any vehicle. So, no, no, this is the homeowner's cars, the tenants. Oh, I'm cars. sorry. Oh, I misunderstood you. The homeowner's cars. We have had a couple of inquiries about cars that were invested, believe it or not. So, uh, one customer actually did decide to do a job for their car. Yeah, well, it's just a, it's some, it's a funny thing. I'd never seen it before, and I had a guy that. Uh, volunteered for a protocol one of the things i did is i asked to see the car and right there they were right in the cracks just loaded so you can do the best job on earth but you really sometimes that inspection needs to be beyond the scope of where you might think you need to look well carl i really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us this evening about your experience using the oxygreen blaster and bed bug destruct system and um if uh any other future customers are looking at this, you've encouraged them to go ahead and invest in the system and you believe it can work for them. Uh, on, a, on that note, is there anything you'd like to add for those potential buyers? No, I think we've covered it all. I think you should, if you've done the due diligence and you're, and you're happy with your business decision, move forward with it, buy the Ozone system. It's a great workhorse. Put it to work and make money with it. Awesome, Carl. Well, I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so very much. You're very welcome. All right. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye.